Hello everybody, welcome to The Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today I'm talking about album number six from music, Bilious Paths. Right, we've made it to the 2000s in the Mike Paradina story, and this marks a fairly significant change for his whole career. Uh, while his last album, Royal Astronomy, did decently well enough, it was also partially a product of major label intervention. The label asked him to go in some certain directions, which may or may not have been flattering to everyone in his audience. I still stand by my feelings that he made the most of it and still ended up with an album that's aged way better than it probably has any right to, but not too long after its release, Paradinus broke off the label to go independent. He'd already set up this little imprint on Virgin Records called Planet Mew in uh, the mid-90s to release his own stuff, but Virgin didn't really know how to market his particular brand of music or even really what to do with it. So in 1998, they just handed full control of the label over to him, birthing the Planet Mew label we all know today. And fast forward to 2003, Paradinas no longer has any affiliation with Virgin, and now he's self-releasing his music through his label, which has already signed a number of other colleagues like Luke Vibert and Jega and Venetian Snares and several others, really starting to build up its greater reputation we know now. And of course, it should uh, possibly not come as a surprise that uh, Paradinas decided to go in as far the opposite direction that he had been moving in with Royal Astronomy as he possibly could. <laughs> following up what is probably his most commercial and trendy album with his most abrasive and uncommercial work yet. And so we get Bilious Paths, an album that I have a very strange relationship with. Now, if I have to be brutally honest, this is probably my personal least favorite out of all his studio albums. It's the one that I just happen to get the least personal enjoyment out of listening to. Though, at the same time, I still think it's pretty solid all around, and think there's a very easy case to make for lots of people marking this as his best work to date as well. My thoughts on this album can pretty much be summed up as being, like, almost the exact same as my thoughts on a certain other legendary IDM classic, Square Pushers Go Plastic. Not only are both the first studio albums from 90s IDM legends in the 2000s making their most frantic and abrasive jungle breakbeat work they've ever done, and leaning into some of their more edgelordy tendencies, but they're also albums that I personally tend to respect more from a distance than get a lot of visceral thrill out of listening to outside of a handful of tracks scattered throughout. Albums that I know a lot of people really love and have always wanted to be able to get into on the same level as everyone else, but could never quite get on board for in the same way, purely for personal taste reasons. In a lot of ways, these two projects are pretty much just the exact same album as approached by two different artists. And there's even a few sonic elements in common, like some bleeping sound effects on cuts like Johnny Maastricht that also appear in cuts like My Red Hot Car. But I do also have a slightly different relationship to Billy's Paths outside of that, since this album was actually the first project I'd ever heard of from Paradinas. Back when I was a little kid in the late 2000s who liked clicking around the iTunes store and finding all these recommendations for 90s electronic artists, I remember coming across music for the first time through an iTunes Essentials playlist. Initially through a remix he did of Jega's Geometry, which blew my mind as a kid. Uh, my hearing that remix even predates me finding out who Aphex Twin was, so there you have it. <laughs> and then that same playlist eventually led me to hear my first solo music track, My Mendigus, the closer of this album, which I also have similarly fond memories of. Now, I'll admit, I remember previewing through this album at the time and thinking it might have been a bit much for me. I only bought the one track and left the rest. But it was also the only solo album from Paradinas available on iTunes at all back then, so it didn't exactly lead to me, like, properly getting into him on that deeper level until many years later when I finally decided to marathon his studio albums in college and fell in love a lot more. But still, this album technically being my earliest exposure to his work does mean that I will have at least some nostalgic memories with it, even though the album never fully clicked with me as the true, like, jungle breakbeat masterpiece that many fans make it out to be. So now, in terms of my actual experience with the music itself, uh, in the 2023 perspective, 
I will admit that I tend to find the first half of this album to be a bit of a headache on average, but again, I can still respect all of it and how all these tracks are fairly easy recognizable as individuals without running together as much as they could have. I think the album starts fairly strong with the opener, Johnny Maastricht, hitting you with uh, all these harsh pads and crashing break beats, shouting rapper samples and wobbling effects that add up to this particularly tinny and harsh industrial vibe, but still all going over a particularly strong bass line that even has a bit of a funky edge to it. Pretty much lets you know exactly what you're going to get into with this whole project. It's going to assault your senses as much as it can, but it'll never completely abandon that trademark Paradinas tunefulness. The other track I particularly like from the first half is Octel Kogopod, originally a remix of the track of the same name by Electric Company, aka Brad Laner. This cut can occasionally feel like the most sluggish out of all the cuts on here, with tons of overbearing, screeching, wiry leads and scraping metallic effects going over a mix of very sparse melodic pads and even some timpanis in the background. It doesn't exactly move along quickly or have a ton of progression, but it is probably the single most memorable cut in the bunch behind the closer. I wouldn't really be able to hum the tune to most of these tracks, but I can still fairly easily remember what this one sounds like. Perhaps aided by my remembering it also being on that same iTunes Essentials playlist I mentioned above. In terms of the other cuts in the first half, I'm not exactly in love with any of them, but don't especially mind any of them either. They're all fine enough on their own. Mineheld really gets into the frantic breakbeat distortion with some cloudy lead melodic textures in the background. You can pretty easily see that being a strong favorite for most other people. Uh, Siege of Antioch can get a tiny bit annoying in some spots with its repeating pitched up vocal snippets going over more especially distorted clanking beat work, but does get more pleasant when it's joined by a bunch of other melodic pads. On Off features a heavily processed vocal performance from Mike Dykehouse, which is really going for some kind of like rockstar coolness, if not really having much of a tune. <laughs> Though I do appreciate that guy being here for the sake of variety, and the hook telling you to put those panties on and take them off is mildly catchy as well. And then there's Silk Ties, which Paradinas originally released as a single a few years earlier under the name Rude S. Tinker, and may very well be the most abrasive and overbearing cut in the bunch, switching off between brittle distorted hip-hop beats and rapper samples into tons of crashing amen breaks going over, I guess, more gabber-influenced distorted kicks. It is a lot, and frankly is often a bit too much for my liking, though also never to the point where I felt the urge to skip it altogether, it's not on Mr. Angry levels. I suppose these are all fun tracks in a vacuum, and again I can see uh, people really getting into these purely off of how consistently hard they all go, but they're not among the most multidimensional material he's ever had to offer, and played one after another they can start to feel like a slug for me as I just uh, feel like I'm getting repeatedly hammered over the head from a bunch of different angles. I will say though, the album does ever so slightly ease up on the intensity in the second half, which does lead to a lot more tracks that I do personally consider to be bigger highlights. Really the only exception might be Mouse Bums. <laughs> Uh, its mixes of buzzing micro-studded beat work with some more chilling pads don't really leave that strong an impression on me, but I, I don't take much issue with the rest of these. AEC Merlin delivers another mix of micro-studded beat work with some more chilling melodic textures that have more of a coherent and engaging tune to them. Fall of Antioch is a nice little brooding ambient passage which makes for a nice lead up to the closer. And then there's the two-parter Grape Nut Beats which delivers nothing but crashing jungle break beat workouts with very little in the way of other accompaniment, but uh, is so belabored and well detailed that they're still consistently able to pull in my attention. The first part was originally conceived as a remix of an obscure track by the DJ producer aka Luke McMillan called Witch Hunt and then it was retooled and extended into the form you see here. Also do quite like the little trade-off between part one and two. They're both distinct tracks with the silence in between, but they do transition well off each other and work well in their own right, with part two delivering a slower but bouncier mix of the more frantic ideas of part one. All plenty of fun, but I'm sure it will surprise absolutely no one that my favorite track here is, of course, the above-mentioned closer, My Mendigas. If this entire album is a mirror to Square Pushers Go Plastic, this is the equivalent to my red hot car. 
if not as consistently replayable as that track, it's still the one that always stuck out to me as the really easy highlight and was able to pull me in way more easily due to its much more accessible melodic approach. Not hitting you with quite as much abrasive beat work and keeping it relatively chill with some bouncing and squirting percussion, a particularly catchy synth guitar loop, and various other synth string pads and other melodic textures that are all really easily memorable despite how weird they can sound together. All bringing back a lot of old memories and just making me feel really nice all around definitely makes for a climactic and resonant finish to the whole experience. And that's everything on Bilious Paths. I'm probably always going to be holding this project more from a distance than I think most people are. It's one that I like certain moments of but don't tend to be pulled in to nearly the same level as his other projects. As someone who tends to like parodying us more for his melodic sensibilities, this project doesn't deliver as much of the stuff that made me a fan of his. And if I'm not in the right mood for it, this will end up being a bit draining to get through and leave me both thinking it's dragging on long and feeling like there's not enough to it. But even on my least charitable listens of this thing, I do still always come out of it with generally positive feelings. And I'd absolutely still give it a recommendation for, ever, for anyone else. It's maybe not the best starting point if you're looking to get into him for the first time, as my experience with it as a kid is any indication, but it is still the most extreme version of his sound he's delivered in full album form to date. For many, that will directly translate to one of the most exciting experiences he's ever delivered. So yeah, I mean, uh, regardless of my own lukewarm feelings on it, do make sure to check it out anyway. It is turning 20 this year, so good time as any to pick it up. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give this a 7.3 out of 10. But of course, this is all just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters, they're awesome people. You want to add yourself to that list, link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.